everybody, and welcome to the final episode of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This is it. We have one final challenge left in the entire game, and it lies at Disney Castle! Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to the Hall of the Cornerstone. We've seen that dark portal that is torn into the Hall of the Cornerstone. We've got to go over there. That's where the final and most brutal of all the bonus bosses lies. So let's make sure that we're well equipped. So, items. At this point, we are finally going to equip some elixirs. We've only got seven of them, though. That's okay. We got that. Our rings, we're going to have Full Boom Plus, Full Boom Plus, Cosmic Arts, and the Shadow Archive Plus. Uh, we got the Grand Ribbon, the Regular Ribbon, the Petite Ribbon, and then the Cosmic Belt. We got Ultimate Weapon as our main Keyblade, Decisive Pumpkin as our Valor Form Keyblade, Hero's Crest as our Master Form Keyblade, and I'm going to equip Winner's Proof as the Final Form Keyblade, because Final Form Fyraga doesn't really work against this guy, which is one of the reasons why he's so tough. Donald, you've got the Premium Mushroom, that sounds good. Actually, it really doesn't matter what Donald has, because Donald's not really going to be in this fight at all, he's going to spend like 99% of it dead. And said, oh, I don't have a lot of, like, mega items. Goofy, you got Save the King Plus. Cool, that'll help you survive at least a little bit longer. Abilities. We got Guard. We do not need Upper Slash. We got Horizontal Slash, Finishing Leap, Retaliating Slash, Slap Shot, No Dodge Slash, Flash Step, Slide Dash, Vicinity Break, Guard Break, Explosion. We only need Aerial Spiral, Aerial Finish. We're not going to have Magnet Burst. Magnet Burst is useful against mob fights, but not against actual, like, bosses. And counter guard, none of the autos. We have Trinity Limit just in case. We've got a max level, all the growth abilities, scan, all of these. We are going to have, a, have our combo layer, combo plus is equipped because that is going to be very useful. No negative combo. I'm going to say yes to Berserk Charge. Why not? We can turn that off later if need be. All of those look pretty good. Booyah. Donald has Flare Force. Uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then Goofy, um, yeah, that's fine. Customize. Instead of Fyraga, we are going to equip Fundaga, and we're also going to equip Elixirs to our shortcut now. We also got Refuga and Kiraga. You do want Fundaga set to shortcut. This is one of the only bosses where Fundaga is actually going to be very, very helpful. Donald, you can be on Technic Attack. Goofy, you can be on Technic Attack. Yeah, it's fine. Sounds good. We're going to leave the room to reset. So that way we don't have to re-equip all this stuff every time. And if this, if there's any one fight where you really need to get, uh, be able to uh, perform quick runs and dodge rolls at the same time, it's this one. Remember, dodge roll, you just lightly tap the square button, and then quick run, you have to t hold it for a long time. Once you get the timing down, it's fine. Anyways, are we ready? Where could this lead? I don't have a good feeling about this. Let's check it out. And we're in this wasteland. Gentlemen, the ultimate bonus boss, Lingering Will. 
This guy is tough as all get out. You're about to see why. So he can start off a whole bunch of different moves. This is Rising Sun. When he does this, try to guard it, and if he ends up hitting you, you're going to need the aerial recovery at the right time. That is his Gauntlet Punch. Kill me, Donald. Right. There we go. All right, now, look at how little damage he's taking. And he's got max health. Get away. Oops. Get good at timing your aerial recovery so that you, you get invincible he brings. Alright, and that's his Keyblade Whip. That is one nasty attack. Alright, he's just spamming Rising Sun for now. He's got a whole bunch of different moves. <laughs> Berserk Charge is going to come into play here now. Thankfully, the more you damage him, the more damage he ends up taking from your attacks. Alright, oh, I was afraid of that. Oh boy. This is Ultima Cannon. He'll shoot this giant orb at us. We can deflect it back, but he can also deflect it back. This is bad. So remember Unknown's move in the first game where he'll lock your commands and like half of them will be shock and one will be release? This is a nastier version of that because it's faster, much harder to break out of. You're constantly taking damage during it, like, much like the Unknown attack. And if you end up hitting Fall, you just immediately die. Second chance if you want more. Screw you, basically. There we go. I got a pause buffer that. Alright, let's go limit form. If you time it right, you can actually deflect Ultima Cannon into him, and it'll damage him a lot. Alright. We're gonna back up because otherwise his revenge value will activate and then he's gonna attack us. Oh no, not not the keyblade bow again. Pause buffering is basically the only way out of that. There we go. Okay, well, bad time to use ours Arcanum. Now he's gonna summon these little guns to try and shoot us. Oh, he's at a desperation move already. Oh my gosh, I've taken out a ton of his HP already. He's got the nastiest desperation move in the game. Okay, this is his Keyblade Glider. It's basically Rising Sun. Yeah, I knew I was gonna die. Oh, he did his attack where he slams and locks some of your commands. When he lands that on you, not only does it deal a lot of damage, he can lock all of your physical attacks, meaning you have to hit him with magic, which is where Flundaga comes in handy and you have to take out a little bit of his HP before you can use your attacks, or he'll disable your magic and you have to use physical attacks. Both are nasty. Oh boy, well we saw, I think, just about every single one of his moves, so that's interesting. Yeah, this guy is hard. <laughs> Very difficult. All right, he's starting out his Keyblade Glider this time. It's basically a faster version of his Rising Sun attack. Yeah, so at the beginning of the fight, you're barely dealing any damage to him, but as as you start comboing him more, your finishers will start dealing a lot more damage. Okay, when he does the gun attack, I like using level 3 glide to just get out of there. I'm constantly pushing the L1 button, so that way when he comes back, I'll be ready for his attack, which is Keyblade Glider. Man, he's just... Generally, when you fight this guy, he loves either spamming Rising Sun or his Keyblade Glider. And he just does that for a lot of the fight. Let's 
Strike Rate doesn't do a whole lot against this guy. <laughs> This is one fight you really do have to learn this pattern, otherwise you're going to die. A lot. So now I think it's time to break out my recommended strategy for this fight, which is Stitch. <laughs> Stitch makes this fight so much more manageable. Better Rock wires both your party members to be alive to do this. The Stitch makes the, part, the fight easier not only because he'll refill your MP allowing you to heal a lot more, but he can also play his ukulele to make Lingering Will stagger, which gives you an opening. Oh, I don't like the Keyblade Whip. Yeah, your finishers in particular deal a lot of damage against Lingering Well, especially with combo boost and combo plus. Alright, so thus far he's being pretty cooperative. If he did I like it when he just does with rising sun over and over again. Okay, I don't like the keyblade whip though. Okay. So at this point, I have to use physical attacks. Oh, thank goodness. This is where this is one of the places Stitch comes in handy, because he can drop HP orbs for you. And now at this point, we actually get our magic. Attack. Although air combos are not as effective against Lingering as well as ground ones are. Yeah, I thought he was gonna break out that whip. So you can see Stitch is making the fight a lot more manageable. Alright, let's get out of here, Stitch. Also, you can just summon him again if at any point he does uh, run out of summon gauge. Alright, desperation move time? At this point, I believe we've seen all of, uh, all of Lingering Wolves moves. Oh, yep, desperation move time, Woody. We're just gonna super glide away from most of this. Until it gets to this part. <laughs> See, St Stitch's ukulele is really the saving grace here, even more than his MP refill. And the problem is, once you get Lingering Will down to very little HP, only a few bars left, he basically just spams this and his Desperation move. Without Stitch, that's going to be a tough thing to manage. Well, I guess I am very impressed by your Gauntlet Punch, <laughs> Lingering Will. Alright, we're getting him down to low HP. Aw, oh, he's down to 1 HP. If I give him one thunder, he's dead. Oh man, Stitch. Stitch makes this fight so much more manageable. Okay, so now we can't actually attack, so now we have- Oh no, this is the worst. This is the worst when he locks one of your commands and then does his desperation. Save me, Stitch. Alright, Stitch. Can you give me my HP bit? Stitch, come on. My MP needs refilling. I can't use my physical attacks and I didn't have MP. Oh, I should have popped in the links and doggone it. I'm stupid. 
Oh, Stitch is back. Or Stitch is away. Let's summon and summon him again! Because <laughs> Dom and Goofy are worthless in this fight except for using summon to drive for him. Alright, here we go, here we go. This is where you need to use Fundaga. Because this is the best way of dealing with him. <laughs> Come on, Wing Green Will, up here. Up here. Where did he go? Oh, here he is. He's been at 1 HP for a while, and I don't like it. Also, nice nice job with my draw. I should be working. Are you kidding me? He just does not want me to get that last HP off of him. Oh, what a surprise. He's using his desperation move. Oh no, I don't have the drive to summon Stitch again! Oh, that's bad. Oh, what?! Why couldn't I use any of the- Oh, he- Are you kidding? I died because he locked my ability to use magic and items. And of course my party members weren't doing anything. Oh, I'm ticked now, Lingering Will. You're gonna die. He was at 1 HP for like 5 minutes. I couldn't hit him. He just kept using his stupid desperation move. Alright, when he does the Keyblade Glider, you want to dodge roll behind yourself at the very start. I like horizontal slash. <laughs> Remember, horizontal slash, you've got to press square during an aerial combo. Ultima Cannon! Once you can time Ultima Cannon right, you can, like, always redirect it back at me really well. And it deals... I'm not going to say it deals a lot of damage against him, but it, it deals a bit, and it does stagger him. Makes the second chance I want some more. I can just kind of get out there. Horizontal slashes, if you just keep spamming him with it during the Zerg charge, they're gonna start doing a lot of damage. Just please keep doing Rising Sun. I can deal with this move easily. Just guard it. Overkill when you're in well. <laughs> this just keeps healing my MP before I can go ham with horizontal slash. Glide to get away from them bullets. Oh boy, desperation move time already, eh, Woody? Oh, you bit me earlier than I was expecting you to. Oh, apparently that killed me, even though I was still staggering from damage. That's fair. That's okay. I'm glad I'm having at least a bit of a tough time against this guy to show you guys how tough he is. 
I was afraid I was gonna beat him pretty effortlessly, actually. Alright. Honestly, one of the trickier parts of this fight is just getting down how to react to all of his potential opening moves. Because he can do... His opening move can be Ultima Cannon, Rising Sun, Keyblade Glider, the Gauntlet Punch, as well as the Slam move that locks part of your commands. He also might be able to start with the bow that locks all of your commands, but I'm not sure. Oh, there's the bow. Green will. I would love to be able to finish him off with the Yohana limit, but I'm not sure if I can. I'm not sure if that would actually count as a finisher. Wasteland area, though. It makes for a great battlefield. Don't try to super glide away from his keyboard glider. You're not faster than him. <laughs> He loves summoning his guns, doesn't he? Honestly, Refuga's not that useful in this fight. The only time I use Refuga is if he starts the fight by slamming the ground and logging your commands. That's basically the only way out of it. <laughs> Just to start spamming Refuga. Alright. You don't want to be gliding at a diagonal to avoid that part. I'm okay with not even blocking this last attack, just because I got Stitch. <laughs> Another Desperation move? Yeah. Lingering Will, once he gets down to HP, it's basically Desperation move. You can get a combo at the end if you're good. Maybe you can get Stitch to stun him. And then he does summon guns, and then he does another desperation move. Alright, he's down to low HP now. Supposed to happen. Oh, that's actually bad. Oh, thank you, Stitch. <laughs> Stitch, you saved my life. Darn it, that's actually one situation where having Upper Slash would possibly would have just ended the fight right there. Oh, I dodged rolled out of it, thank goodness. Oh, Dr. You, that's just not fair! I literally couldn't do anything. He desperation moved into an attack without any break, then immediately did another desperation move! <laughs> let me heal, let me heal, let me heal, let me heal. Come on, Stitch. Ukulele him. Are you... He desperation moved right into another desperation move! This is just the most unfair thing I've ever seen. Your help here, Fox. <laughs> Dodged 
dog on it. I thought that was the end of his... That is just not fair. He did his desperation move five times in a row, and there was nothing I could have done to interrupt him. <laughs> yeah, this fight can get just downright on. Well, it's not unfair. This is honestly one of the more fair of the bonus bosses. It's super difficult, but it's at least legitimately difficult. It's not really until Birth by Sleep that you start getting into the downright unfair bonus bosses. Life. Not Peter! Alright, I guess, I guess we're summoning Peter Pan! <laughs> Gotta fly! Once you learn about pause buffering, that the bow attack becomes a whole lot less dangerous. Because believe me, that used to be the most unfair attack. But if you pause buffer, it's not as bad. Uh, thanks for letting me heal again. That was nice. We'll get our revenge. We will get our revenge. Oh, look, Donald died! I needed to heal Donald because if Donald was dead, I wouldn't be able to summon Stitch. Guard break plus explosion deals insane damage. If you don't have Stitch, then you can use Thunder at exactly the right time to stagger him as well. Which is why I recommend it. Stitch, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Now I can thunder him to death to get my attack back. Or not. Yeah, you can see he has the tiny little HP bar. That's how much HP he has left before you get your commands back. This music is amazing. This music is called Rage Awaken, which is fitting considering the rage you're probably going to have when you face this guy for the first time. Oh, that didn't stun him, apparently. Wow, he's, he's busy. At the beginning of the fight, he leaves a lot more openings in between his attacks. The lower uh, HP he gets, the, the less time he has. Oh, desperation move time already, eh, Woody? Well, not already. We've been fighting for a while. It's 
Stitch is about to go away. I'm gonna just dismiss him manually. Did I summon Peter? I did not want freaking Peter Pan. There we go, Stitch is back again, alright. Stupid Peter Pan, I did not highlight you. Oh, great. Okay, this is the worst if he locks your magic and items, followed by his desperation move, you're basically screwed. My only, the only reason I, I didn't survive. I was gonna say the only reason I survived is because Stitch was at least dropping HP orbs for me. Oh, I'm getting ticked. I don't remember him having, like, literally no openings and just spamming his desperation move nonstop at the end. I remember him using it a lot, but not to this extent. Oh, look! That is literally- that is literally- you know what? Just kill me, dude. There's no way I can live. Actually, maybe there is. There we go. Alright, here we go. Now it's good. Never mind. It's not over yet. Oh, well, that. Never mind, I was just dead. bow and you're low on HP, you might be dead, because you're constantly losing HP when you have when you're hit by the cup. Oh. Sometimes he just... There's some rounds where he just loves spamming certain moves. And woe to you if the move he spammed is the one that locks, like, half the commands. Because I honestly consider that to be worse than the bow move, because at least the bow move is very temporary. The, uh, the slam move, like, lasts for a very long time. Wow, I just destroyed some of his guns with lightning. I, I didn't know you could do that. Oh boy, is the desperation move all the time? You have to fly directly away from wherever you were. Apparently that didn't stagger me that time, just so it could cut through my second chance at once more. Gee, thanks. Yeah. 
He's thrown out the guns pretty early this time around. I also think I need a new strategy for docking his desperation move, because it keeps hitting me. It was working fine at the beginning, but not anymore. I just kept poking him with thunder until he, his revenge value kicked in and he for disappeared just started doing something. I'm not sure if I parried that or if Stitch parried that. Either way, good job. Man, he just loves summoning the guns this time around. Alright, it's time for his desperation move. Okay, that's better. So you guard the first two attacks, then glide away from your gears. No, I forgot about that last dab. It looks like it's over, and then, like, you're like, oh, okay, I'll recover, and then he, like, heal. As soon as you recover, boom, dashes out of the wall, kills you. Yeah, look at how long he was left open when he was at full HP. Oh, dang. Oh, I just realized Stitch was parrying the blasts from the gun back at uh, Lingering Will. Oh, that's actually funny. That's less funny. Yes, let me keep doing this. I was wondering when we're going to die. We're going to kick in. Yeah, all right, this fight's going a lot more smoothly. off of that one of my first rounds against this guy. I almost killed him. He was at 1 HP for like 5 minutes and then he escaped death. Oh yeah, this is much better. If I can just figure out how to block this end part of the attack. Oh, looks like Guardian works. Oh my gosh, I finally figured out how to block his DM. You block the first three attacks, glide away from the gear, and then block the end. Way, but I couldn't get away. He disappeared to leave his guns behind. He's out there somewhere. Probably gonna do another desperation move. 
Nope. Even worse. Oh, great. Okay, well, at least now I'm prepared. Again? Already? It's a really good thing I learned how to dodge this then. You actually hurt me there! I was about to kill him and then you had to refill my MP. Horizontal Slash would have killed him, because it counts as a finisher. Alright, get up against the wall. Alright, as many of these as we can. Yeah! And we get the final drive gauge. We now have nine drive gauges. And for defeating Lingering Will, we get the proof of connection. Proof of winning the battle at the portal at Disney Castle. Perhaps it has changed, Sora. Now we get the gold crown. And I just realized we never needed any of our elixirs. Elixirs honestly aren't that great for that fight. Stitch is much better. Now, you might think that that's going to be the end of the Let's Play. Not quite. I'm going to fight him again because, as it just so happens, there exists the biggest cheese strat ever against this guy. If you are really struggling to beat him, and you just can't beat him because you can fight him as many times as you want, I can show it off again. If you're really struggling to beat him, then use this strategy. It makes it so much easier, and it's in fact quite laughable. But it requires some setup. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, not party, we're going to go to customize. Doll and Goofy, we are both going to set to Sora attack, which means that they will not attack. We don't want them to attack during this at all. Next thing we're going to do is I'll modify our abilities. We are going to unequip... Uh, we can keep horizontal slash. We're going to unequip... That one, and slap shot, and flash step, and slide dash, and vicinity break, and guard break, and explosion, and aerial spiral, and aerial finish, and counter guard. We're going to equip basically every blue ability. Actually, yeah, equip un unequip every blue ability except guard. You're going to want to still have guard. After that, we're going to unequip combo pluses and air combo pluses... And then we're going to equip negative combo. Another thing we're going to unequip is high jump, which might sound weird. Just trust me. We're going to want to unequip high jump. And then the other main thing we're going to do is we are going to equip the Fenrir Keyblade as our main Keyblade. So at this point, we just don't have combos. We just go straight to the finishers. And what's nice is that we can go straight to our aerial finishes like this. As you can see, that's pretty quick. And with finishing plots, we can do this like, multiple times. You don't want to do it multiple times, though. So, in fact, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unequip all of my finishing pluses. Just so that way it doesn't happen. So now we can just do one combo finisher. And again, it might sound weird. Like, why the heck would you unequip all this? Just, just trust me. <laughs> We're going to have some fun with lingering will. All right, the man in armor is on the other side. I can take him again.
So now we're gonna fight him again, and I'm gonna. Sh so, other than his opening attack, he's not hard at all at this point. Oh wow, he knocked me real far away. Goofy, you did it! All right. Nope. Still didn't open it. Talk about it. Okay, Goofy. Goofy, good. Goofy did that. Now what we're gonna do is just jump and do our finishing move on him. Over and over and over and over. If we do this, his revenge value will never hit. He will constantly be staggered. He can't do anything, and we're doing insane damage to him. The reason you don't want any of your blue abilities is because those can affect what your finisher will be. You don't want any of the combo pluses. You want the shortest combo possible so you won't add revenge value and you can keep doing this. You don't want high jump because if you high jump, if you have high jump, it put you off and jump over him or too high up so that you can't hit him. And you want Dalu to be set to sword attack so that they won't hit him and trigger his revenge value. <laughs> so if you ever if you're having trouble beating Lingering Will, just do this. scare me anymore. <laughs> it's honestly, you might think that looks difficult, and once you get the like timing down of that, it's really easy to do. And you can just beat him every time. He's like, how did you do that? That's not fair. Ah, uh, rage. And now at this point, after you beat him the first time, every time you beat him after that, you get a manifest illusion. So honestly, once you get the cheese strategy down, this is by far the fastest and easiest way of getting manifest illusions. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it. That's basically everything in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. I say basically everything because we technically haven't completed the journal. Uh, I think we've completed the character... Well, here. We've completed all of the character files and all of that. We haven't completed missions, minigames, or limits. Apparently we haven't used every limit in the game. What, what limit have we not used? Please tell me which limit we have not used. Oh, maybe? <laughs> Apparently we never used Stitches Ohana. That's literally- we, we tried using it at one point in one of my failed attempts at Lingering Well. Stitches Ohana is the one limit we haven't used, but that would fill out that entrance. Synthesis notes, uh, we haven't completed the collection list. Those don't do anything. It's literally just like, oh, you collected like 35 dark gems. Now you can buy them at the shop. We have all, almost all of them, honestly, so we could do that, but that doesn't really give you anything. Then we got mini games, uh, Twilight Town. A lot of these are literally just like, oh, oh, put up the posters on the wall again. Oh, smash all the bees again, which we did in Roxas's story, as well as the struggle fights. Uh, Radiant Garden, it's, there's like, you can borrow Scrooge's skateboard, that's it. Olympus Coliseum, I think you can borrow a skate- or no, no, that's Phil's training. Uh, Agrabah, you can borrow a skateboard and you can do the magic carpet stuff again. Neither of them is very good. 100 Acre Wood, even though we beat all the minigames, it's like, oh, you don't actually get them in the journal unless you do them again, which doesn't make sense to me. Halloween Town, I believe it's like, oh, you can do Santa's Workshop minigame again. Port Royal, like, uh, oh, use use Will's skateboard in Port Royal, which doesn't make sense. Space Paranoids, you have to do Light Cycle again. Again, none of this actually does anything. And then the missions are basically just like, oh yeah, uh, all those minigames, get a decent enough score. Again, it does absolutely nothing except give you the little Mickey check mark next to all these. And it gives you a PS4 trophy that I already have. Other than that, there is literally no point in filling these out, so I'm not going to bother doing that. Nobody would even want to watch that anyways. And of course, the hardest part of completing the journal is you have to do Atlantica again. That's just, that's just cruel and unusual punishment right there. That's just evil. Why would you make people do Atlantica again? That was the worst thing ever. Anyhow, that's, so, that's everything that's worth showing off in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Maybe I didn't have to show off the gummy shit boss, but at least that was, like, a cool new thing I wanted to show. Other than that, that's Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Lingering Will is a mysterious guy. He's gonna tie in with one of the future games specifically Birth by Sleep, and you'll kind of see his connection with why he hates Xehanort so much, as well as being like, wait, you're not the one I chose. More on that in Birth by Sleep, which I may eventually let's play, I'm not sure yet. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody, especially those of you who tuned in for the whole series. I really appreciate it. And I hope you tune in for future Let's Plays of mine. I'm not sure what, what I'll be doing next, but it's sure to be something fun. 
look forward to that. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and may God bless you wherever you are. Oh, yup! Yeah.